You're listening to the Higher Calling Podcast, your source for all things hiring, staffing, and recruiting. I'm Pete Newsom, and I'm joined by Ricky Baez today. Ricky, how in the world are you? Pete, I don't think people truly understand what it takes to do a podcast. What it takes to do an intro based on the, <laughs> uh, the few false starts I just had, Ricky. Is that what you... You couldn't be oh. referring to that, could you? No, no. All I'm saying is when the DVD comes out, watch the blooper reel. It's going to be awesome. Yes. We we are your source for all things hiring, staffing, and recruiting. Not your horse for it. <laughs> Not as, your uh, horse. <laughs> as we just Join discovered. with, join by, join who, throat clearing, all kinds of things. <laughs> but here we are nonetheless. That's and, right. And we have a few things to talk about in the job world. We decided, however, that we're not going to do more layoff talk because we know that's happening. And um, well, that, you know, that, that gets sort of old to talk about week in, week yeah, out, doesn't it? It does. It, it's just, just too much of it. And oh, we're doing it, aren't we? Yep. Change subject. Well, let's change the subject. Let, yeah. Let's, let's go to one that, um, you know, is, is certainly going to uh, be different. Uh, and, and as the world continues to evolve, we have to evolve with it. And the question at a time like this, with a topic like this becomes how much do we really need to evolve is, can you mm. go too far? And specifically what I'm referring to here is some of the, um, the language that we've used for a long, long time that in certain areas is now being considered offensive or even, even violent. That's such a, such a serious way to put it. Violent language in the workplace and things we should cut out. Do you have any do you have any immediate thoughts on that um, before we before we get into some specifics an article that um, that was published a couple of days ago about violent um, language what oh what no Pete about? let's jump right in because um, I know the article that you're talking about and I think you and I are going to be in the same sheet of music on this one because I read this and I'm like oh I cannot wait to go live so <laughs> so what wait. so there's a company we're not going to name names nope. but the, as the article um, uh, goes there there was a company that uh, who has recently put out a list of uh, phrases that they don't think should be used anymore um, and offered alternate alternate suggestions for these phrases. And these are things that um, you know, have been used throughout my lifetime, for sure. You know, they may, I don't know how far back or the, I don't know the specific origin or a lot of these phrases, but I do know that we take them for granted in, in terms of not having a violent meaning, I thought, mm -hmm. but yet um, I think the, what this article is trying to say is that there's, there's, there's danger in doing that. Is, is that fair to there say? There is, there is. And the name of the article is woke tech company seeks to replace violent language. This is by Steve Watson from summit.news.com. Um, so yeah, so there's this, uh, this organization that put out this guideline. Apparently, there's a guideline that talks about words that we that we have become accustomed to saying in the office, and let's let's not use those words anymore, and let's change them to other non-violent words. And it sounds weird to say that. That's what they mentioned it on the article about non-violent words. But Pete, I'm sure as soon as we start talking about these, a lot of our audience are going to agree these are not that bad. Well, They're first, do, do, do you know, do you know the history of Summit News? Because I do not. I, 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 I know that they're, they're a, a news website. It looks, I don't know if they're sensational in nature and in, uh, in what they typically print, but yeah, I think I do we, not know who they are. I want to, I want to caveat this by <laughs> saying that we're, 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 we're taking uh, also for granted that this is accurate reporting and there's yeah. a company that is really saying this and it's not just, um, you know, to provoke conversation or or outrage where which seems to happen a lot today um you know anytime you hear the word woke or anytime i hear the word woke it's it's usually associated with something polarizing um that you know and, and sometimes used almost in an antagonistic way um and so i i confessed months ago that uh, on air that i don't necessarily even know what the word means um and i still don't i i, I know it has to do with, um, I just associate with the change of rules that I don't necessarily uh, feel like I'm keeping up with. And, and this this particular example is is as good as any where um, we're yeah, being told that these phrases um, are no longer safe. So you want to just talk about them? But I didn't <laughs> want to put that caveat out there because um, yeah, the, the, who, who knows? 
don't know. Yeah, we, yeah, we, we don't know where this came summit. from. I mean, it's it's look. I mean, I know I know we are a world famous podcast, but uh, even our top notch research team couldn't find any information on this. So we're gonna put them on it there, Pete. But let's just jump right in. So this is so I'm gonna name a few. I'm going to name a few. You let me know how you feel about it, right? So this is an actual guide. This is from the guide that they published. So instead of using the phrase, we're going to pull the trigger, they want to change that to we're going to launch. Now I'm pausing there for a second because they're saying we're going to pull the trigger. That phrase is violent or it, it 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 lives in a violent type of a world and we should stop using that yep. Be, i i i mean i get i mean a gun has a trigger i understand that but everybody knows that's not what it means and right. i don't know if anybody who will get into a fizzy because somebody said we're going to pull the trigger i mean do you well i i Perhaps there is someone who would, maybe there's multiple someones. And I think whenever I hear, um, whenever a topic like this comes up and it seems to come up with increasing frequency lately, I think, is it our job? You know, should we, tr should we strive to not offend anyone, which seems almost impossible today. <laughs> and so how someone chooses to interpret it is, I think the question. Um, and then what what's realistic, uh, you know, in, in terms of, okay, someone may associate that with a gun and I could see why. Um, but someone, well, not a group of people, right? Well, I mean, some, some number of people, right. And then, yeah. you know, how, how do you determine who should be the arbiter of whether that is offensive or not? Right. It's not offensive to me. It's not offensive to you. It's offensive to someone. Um, I generally think that you know you you choose what to be offended by, right? I, I mean, it, it, but um, yeah, I don't, I don't, you know, we're we're going to pull the trigger. Um, it's a phrase I use. Me too. Um, I don't. I've never thought about it as violent. Um, I don't know what's what's your take on that because it's a slippery slope, right? I mean, I, I yeah. think we could all agree on that. This has a pretty long list of of similar phrases. We'll read some more, but. What's your uh, what's your take on it? I'll give you an example because I have a perfect example of something that actually went through with something similar to this, where this question would come up. And I don't know if I shared this with you on the show before, but a long time ago, long time ago, I was working for an organization. And okay, so you're from Florida, and it's a, here in Florida they call soda uh, Pepsi, right? And I think you and I talked about this in area before. No, 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 no. no Coke? Was it Coke? Well, no, it's Coke by default because we're in the South. Got it. Got it. Okay. You yes. see, I was wrong. I'm sorry. I, you know what? We need to change that language, Pete. That was very violent towards me. Uh, that, well, <laughs> no, no, no. So, so check it out. Okay. So you corrected me because, because in the South, we call it Coke. So, but what do they call it in Ohio? I, I don't know. Pop. I know a pop, right? Pop is used. They call it pop. Yeah. Okay. So we had a situation where I had an employee who is from Florida who was reporting to a manager who was from Ohio. And the manager kept referring to soda as pop. And it drove this employee nuts. This employee came to my office in HR in downtown Orlando to file a complaint. And I'm like, oh, my God, what's the complaint? And I'm listening to what she has to say. And she is saying, you need to stop Susan from using the word pop. It is not pop. We are in Florida. It is Coke. This is what it is, blah, blah. And she was as serious as a heart attack. So regardless on how passionate she is about how that word offends her, that she is the exception right? She is the outlier. I'm not going to force this manager to stop using a regular word that's called pop or from where she's from. That's what it's called. And I'm not going to change her way of talking just because this one employee feels like they're harassed or it's a, it's a hostile environment. In the legal world, that's called the prudent person rule. And the prudent person rule says, what would the reasonable person think? And what would the reasonable person feel? The reasonable person would not think pop is, is a derogatory term, just so I would think the reasonable person wouldn't think that we're going to pull the trigger is going to be a violent term. Now, I agree with what you're saying as far as maybe somebody has PTSD, but look at the replacement. We're going to launch. I was a Marine. 
right? I've I worked exactly on the line with um our, our artillery cannon. Maybe I got PTSD for that. Do we have to change that term now? It, it is. I'm, I agree with you. It is a huge slippery slope. So to me, the prudent person rule should always apply when we're about to make a decision. Well, yeah, language is is being um, is in the spotlight a lot these days yeah. in, in terms of drilling into intent and meaning and the definition of words, you know, we, we have, of course, there's a lot, um, you know, there's been a lot of talk about use of pronouns lately and changing um, you know, what I consider to be traditional definitions, right? People, mm -hmm. uh, they and them being, being one of those where that's a plural phrase um, that now is, uh, you know, uh, individuals have chosen to um, want to be referred to that generically, right? I think to not associate it with um, with a specific gender, and so it's changing the 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 language as we've as we've used it, right? And so um, there's a lot of sensitivity around that right now. We know that the, you know the you know gender um, in general, and um, I I I don't know if this is just like I said. Once you go down this path of 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 saying. I want you to use a different phrase because I don't like the phrase, right? Not, <laughs> not, you know, it should be an individual, you know, it's not, not, a, I'm taking the choice away from you, Ricky, and I'm going to tell you which phrases to use. I think that's a, that's a dangerous, it's a dangerous thing to do. It's a and slippery it also, slope. Man. At some, at some level, I think, um, you know, it, um, you know, it's, it's hard to, it's hard to take it seriously. It's hard to want to spend of all the challenges of all the, the, the difficult things we're facing in, in our economy and our society and, you know, life as a whole in the year 2023 to worry about whether we're going to pull the trigger <laughs> is a bothersome phrase. I mean, you have to have, your life's got to be pretty good where you you have time to focus on that. Right. Well, right? I mean, like you, you don't, you don't have, you don't have many, many, Oh, Pete, Pete, you want to see how much time this person have? There's more. Are you ready for this? All right. Uh, I'll take a stab at it, right? Instead of seeing that, I'll take the first pass at it. So taking a stab at an idea, that's going to be an issue. Here's another one. Did we jump the gun? All right. So did we jump the gun? Don't say that. You got to say, did we start too soon? Now, I don't know this to be definitively true, but I assume jumping the gun is a phrase from track uh, where... You, there's actually a gun that's fired to to start um, a race, um, and there's that makes sense. It, well, I mean, I, I don't know if the I don't know if it predates that, um, but yeah, you know, the, the the track and field. But that is what happens. I mean, the starter's pistol is is a thing, right? There actually is a gun that shot. I mean, there's not bullets in it, but it makes a a, you know, a noise. It's used in middle school track meets all around the country um, in high school, so. You know, you quite literally do get penalized for jumping the gun in a in a track and field event, and and um, that makes sense. <laughs> so I don't. So did we start too soon? Now does it mean the same thing? Yes, it does. It means you started too soon. Um, <laughs> but I don't know that. I don't. I don't. I, you know, I'll bite the bullet is another one, right? I'll bite the bullet. Okay, bullets. So you know, in, are inherently bad. Um, I think I know where that one comes from. I, I think that is a uh, is like I'll from, say from kung fu from the old kung fu movies back in the day. I'm gonna make this up, and I may sound it may be foolish as a result, but I associate it with like old western movies uh, where you 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 know, bite the bullet if you. Uh, this is probably a, stu a completely wrong. Um, I shouldn't even say it. I'm not going to say it, Ricky. I, I pulled Pete, back. Go ahead and say no. it. We'll just say we got it from the Summit News. We, you, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look it up now while we're talking to see, <laughs> see how off I am. Um, <laughs> but I did notice one of our favorite phrases on here, Ricky, and that's I you know, saw it. beat a dead horse. I, that, that's the one that really caught my attention because you and I, as we're doing now, we're quickly getting to that point where we're beating a horse <laughs> on this topic. Um it's weird to think about why would anyone beat a dead horse? I think that's a point you wouldn't do that. So I could argue that's maybe nonviolence, right? We're saying I we're saw not that beat part, the dead horse. And I'm like, if Pete and I were for that company, we, we would not only be fired, we will be we would be prohibited from returning back on premises. I was, yeah, I saw that one too. And I'm like, that's our phrase. But Pete, here is the funniest one. Are you ready for this? 
I love this one. That'll kill two birds with one stone. Don't say that anymore. What you have to say now is that'll feed two birds with one scone. <laughs> That's hilarious. You can't say that'll kill two okay, birds that, with one stone. Okay, so that. So now they just wanted to rhyme. Is that that's the pretty only... much? I mean, okay. So what? You can't see it. So when they order a twenty eight dollar Uber from Popeye's Chicken, where do you think those birds come from? Right? I mean, somebody killed them. <laughs> Something happened. That's not a big issue. It's just we, <laughs> Pete. All I'm saying is, if you and I are in a meeting, please never ever say that'll feed two birds with one scone. Please don't say that. <laughs> well, here here's yeah, here's the problem, right? As much as anything else, is that we. Someone decided to make us list, and you and I could argue, you know, probably agree that someone's, um, you know, this this would be considered first world problems, right? Um, where you have enough time to to be bothered by this. And I actually saw there was something over the weekend. It was spread around on social media a lot. I won't I won't talk about it too much, but it was someone who was um, who's a popular. I think I think it's a popular YouTuber. Um, my kids know who this person is. This is when I start to feel like I'm out of the loop with some of this stuff, but um, who was talking about, you know, just, just different changes in phrases and terminology. And I'm worried. I, I don't keep up. I, I can't, I don't, mm -hmm. I'm not necessarily exposed to some of these phrases and um, that, that, that are supposed to be you know used today, right. To, to not hurt someone's feelings. And I just think there's, like the rules are changing too rapidly. Um, you know, for that's where I, I'm, 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 man, I'm, uh, you know, I've just turned 52. I'm, I'm not going to be able to pull these. I'm not going to be able to say, stop beating the dead horse. <laughs> I can't, it's, it's too much of a habit at this point. So, he, so here's what I've learned. I've learned that it, cause, cause I'm noticing that too, right? I'm, I'm about to be 46. So I, I'm, I'm learning that there are some things out there that I'm like, they just don't make sense to me. And I was confused for a while. And then I'm like, Wait, a minute, this is exactly what my parents were with me growing up, right? At some point, they were at their prime, and now this is their ideals are set and they cemented in their foundation. And now they're starting to see a different generation with the same thing. And that's why me and my parents clash, and a lot of people clash with their parents. We're, we're there, right? We used to be the kids to be yelled off the lawn. Now we're the ones yelling to get off the lawn, Pete. Yeah, I think, and I, I wonder if that's what what this is, right? I mean, is is this a lot of uh, this this YouTuber over over the weekend? What they that I saw interviewed was saying how you know, all this was a product of being bored, you know, during COVID. People had too much time on their hands and started coming out uh, with all of these new rules and, and and things you can say and can't say, and it does kind of line up, about. right? Yep. It um, does line up. Yeah, with with the timing, so. All right, so this, so we we can look at this and say, don't you, say it. You, you you may have gone too far with us, right? Like oh, okay. it seems like it's gone too far. Um, to to identify these words as is is um being violent in nature. Um, you know, by the way, bite the bullet does come. It is what I thought. I should have gone with it because I would have looked like <laughs> I was um, a little more sure of myself. It, it was where a does phrase. it come from? Yeah, it was from you know old battlefields uh, when you know, they were pre anesthesia. You would you would literally bite a bullet if you had to be um, sutured or or you know, stitched up, and so it was a way of of um, you know just like you 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 bite a stick you know to prevent you know seizure. You bite a bullet if someone's going to um, you know cut into you. <laughs> They had no sticks around. Like that. They had yeah. no sticks around. They just got ammunition <laughs> that cost the US, the US government money. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I think you can probably still use the bullet if you don't bite through it. But um, got it. So, yes. Yeah, so, right. bite the bullet. Well, let's move I, on. I think we've beat a dead horse. <laughs> let's move on. <laughs> we have. Um, no. so, so, here's another topic you know, for today that, that um, once again, it seems to be. Uh, common you know and and talked about on every um, every time we turn around lately but i was at a client meeting last week and they uh, are you know, we're talking about their um, their their staff coming back in the office and how nobody wants to go back even though they now mm. see some business benefit to coming back and and they're dealing with that um issue where uh, you know once you give freedom of, of that nature. And, and it's hard to take back. It's hard to, 
you know, tell uh, the analogy that I always <laughs> use because I'm a father of four. I'd always, you know, I think of, I, I coach a lot of sports and, and I, uh, over the years and I, and I of course have four kids. So I'm always using analogies from parenting and sports and because they all seem to really uh, resonate um, yeah. and, and with things that happen in the workforce. And the one that comes to mind here is if you, if you tell your, your child that, Hey, your bedtime is now 10 PM instead of 8 PM, everyone's happy. Right. That's to say, Hey, you don't have to come to the office anymore. You can go home. But then if you say, Hey, bad, bad news, your bedtime that has been 10 PM. Now it's 8 PM. That's not going to go well. That's good. You're, not. you're, 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 you're not going to have fun. No. With that. So you can do it, but it's going to be ugly. So what do you, what do you think about that? Is that a good analogy? It's a great analogy, but I'm wondering because I do have, a, I, I obviously, I wish I would have known this back then, but um, let's continue on with that analogy. What if you told your kids, Hey, you're now your, your bedtime is no longer eight. It's going to be 10. Yay. For a few months. And you set that expectation. And then you're like, on this day, we got to come back. Are we good? Do you think the kids will be more receptive when that time comes if they know this is coming? Um, well, I don't think, yeah. I mean, in theory, but right? but if but if they could go next door and uh, the bedtime still 10 p.m. <laughs> then I mean true. <laughs> right. Almost no sleepovers. The, yeah, that's that's a reality, right? You're not the only yeah. game in town. Um, yep. you know, with with work. Um so no, you know, but it's it's an interesting point, right? If you had said, "Hey, we're doing this temporarily," well, that was two years ago. Yeah, that was you know that was th- shoot that was three years ago now. Is that possible? Yeah, that was three years ago. Wow. Which yeah, which wow is impossible that that you know, March twenty twenty right was when we all. So that um, means that means next year we're going to see the first college graduates from when the pandemic started well that would be my that would be my that uh, would be my my oldest son who's yeah. a junior in college now he was a senior in high school when, when this that happened when this yeah. all kicked in yeah it was his last semester and um like many uh it, it was a really interesting thing to witness this is off topic but because he was a freshman you know, living away in a dorm for the first time we we heard from lots of parents in those situations that um, it was a huge shift for, yeah, for, yeah. for, for children. Now he was fortunate where he was, he was involved in, um, he was playing football at the time. So he didn't have to be in the dorm, but otherwise you didn't go to class. You didn't really have social events. You show to. Yeah. So that was a whole different, different well, deal. No different for the workforce. No different at all. Look, it, it's, it's people. And okay. I'm, I'm, I'm going to say this, right. It's easy to Monday morning quarterback. That is, that is the easiest thing to do. What we should have, could have, would have done. But, you know, three years later, now we're looking back. Yeah, I think, I think maybe if we would have set some expectations, but you know what? We were building the sailboat as we were sailing in it. That's what we were doing. We, did, we, we, we didn't have a playbook. The last playbook for something like this to happen, what was it? The Spanish flu? right? Back in the early 1900s. So we didn't have a playbook for this for our workforce today. There's a playbook, but it hasn't been updated in 100 years. So I guess what I'm saying is, is, you know, for all the employees that are being asked to come back into the office, I see I'm, I'm, I'm on the fence on that. Because my question is, if the employees are working, they're performing right now, what is the reason to bring them back into the office? Now, if you have shown that their performance is dropping, nothing is happening, you're trending the opposite way, I would definitely understand why you want to bring them back into the office, right? To make sure you're managing that process. Make sure you, you are the captain of that ship. But what if it's not? Why bring them back? That's the part I don't understand. I, almost without exception, when I speak with people about this, it's not a one there's not one simple answer to it. Mm. Uh, there are, there are pros and cons and just, just it, there we're, we're having to weigh things differently than, than we did in the past where, yeah. you know, I can just use our own you know, staffing company as an example where we were giving um, the ability to work at home um, is sort of as a reward thing because uh, yeah, it was, it was an, it, okay. It's a given that people 
would like to be remote, would like to be virtual. So we were experimenting with it and we were working towards potentially giving it to senior employees, senior staff who've um, really earned, I, I guess, earned the not trust of, of not being in the office, but earned the ability to function autonomously and independently remotely. And so it was a milestone thing where once you got to a certain point of competence and, um, and expertise in your role, then you could do that because you didn't need to be in the office. So we were heading in that direction as a company. This fast forwarded everything for us and, mm-hmm. and, and it got us to a point we thought we'd get to anyway, um, just a lot, a lot faster through COVID. But wouldn't it, but we we're also realizing, okay, we do lose something through this. You do do lose some camaraderie. You do lose um, the ability to learn. I'll give you an even more real world example that just happened where we have a weekly meeting um, and it's the only time that I get to interface with everyone as a whole and it's over Zoom. Now, while we get together on a semi-regular basis in the office, we gather, but I delivered a message. It, it, I realized after the fact, the message wasn't received as exactly as I thought it, as I intended for it to be. Um, but I didn't get to read the room, read the room. Okay. Up front. I but then I also didn't get to interact with the individuals at, uh, throughout the day as I would have, I didn't get to see them in the hallway. I didn't get to see them um, at their desks or in, in, in their offices or in my office. It was just, I, I, I made a statement yeah. and <laughs> it didn't come across exactly as I intended a week went by and it was only by circumstance that I found out, Hey, Oh, I don't, I, I needed to clarify that statement. Yeah. So I was blissfully ignorant. So that's not a good thing, but anyway, that's just one example of that's a good point, though. would not have existed that that problem wouldn't have existed if we were all in the office. So is there benefit? Yeah. But is there a drawback? Yeah. There, there is that. That's too. a good point. Yeah. So, so it's, I hear that. I hear that you're right because there it's it's look I'm an extrovert you're an extrovert and one of the things I really enjoyed about coming into the office on a Monday morning is just checking in with my team how was the weekend what you do I love I love to see what they did for you know for for the weekend and I love that Monday morning chat that I had with my team and every now and then because even if you're stuck in a project and you're like God I've been at this for hours you want to break away and then you go find Sally or Mike and let's go get some coffee somewhere to kind of recharge. You're right. You don't have that. So, I mean, it, it, there are pros and there are cons, but that all that means is that, look, the pandemic, the, the pandemic forced this organization and hundreds of thousands of other organizations nationwide from turning this benefit into an almost a necessity. And see, I'm, I'm even uncomfortable saying that we're necessary because you don't need to work from home. The norm, almost the norm. That's the word I'm looking for. And although I do understand that piece, technology keeps evolving and evolving and evolving. And eventually that human interaction that we're missing now is going to be replaced with AI here in a few years. It's going to happen. It's happening now. Wait, so you're thinking the AI is going to replace human interaction at what level? I I mean, not completely. I mean, but at some point it is. You got to admit all these AI stuff we've seen lately, they're pretty intuitive. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. What, 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 do you, what is it going to replace in terms of human interaction, though? That, because it, 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 AI offers a lot of things, but human interaction uh, ain't one of them. So, so no, okay. So, so all right. I'm just pulling this out of the air. It's okay. out of the air, right? Let's see it's if this out, works. I don't have any rhyme or reason about it, right? I'm working from home. Here I am. I, I got everybody's in a meeting. Oh man. Hey Siri, start asking Siri. No, stop. You actually asked Siri. It, it actually activated. Let me refer it to stop. So okay, I'll say, hey, blank. Um, I need some. I I need some help. I need a break. It can have a conversation with you. Okay, there was a movie about that. Uh, there's been a couple movies about that, I believe. Um, really? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Not Terminator. I mean, Terminator. Oh no, Ex Machina was one uh, where the guy built a robot to keep. You know, it was like it uh, kept him company. That and, was not for the office. <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then and then there no, but then there was the one. Um, oh man, the guy who fell in love with his Siri app. I didn't see the movie. I can't even think of who was in it. Um, been in love with the app 
Yeah, like he fell in love with the Siri like app that it, it where it was talking he, back to him more. Life Alexa, imitates like art. Huh? <laughs> life imitates art. Yes, I, I guess. But <laughs> but but it. Wait, wh- why are we talking about this, Ricky? Because we. we think I'm that sorry, this, Matt. This is. We, we, this we is going about to working from home yep. and AI replacing human interaction. Okay. You know like, what? That, that, that leaves us at Wally land pretty soon is, is what we're talking about. So no, I don't think AI is going to replace human interaction. Um, it, at any, at any, any great level. I think it's, I'll be your best friend, Siri. Well, I mean, rise up later. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how that translates into 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 you know, improvement or detriment in the workforce. So, so make your make bring that back to. Uh... Well, here's how I bring it back because you're seeing that there's there's a human element that's missing, and I agree with you. Today there is a human element that's missing. In about ten years, I don't know if we're going to say that. I don't know if we're going to be able to say that because technology is evolving so rapidly, and I mean rapidly. I mean I'm not even going to mention Chat GPT now because we've beat that dead horse um and it, it, it it's it's going so fast that later on it is going to be very difficult to tell what's real and what's not how diff that difficulty level is going to be how it, it's that that that's a measuring tool and how well these things are going to be built so that's what i'm saying later on we're going to have more tools to fill in that gap than what we have right now well if anything you're making the k i i do agree with you that it, it but even some of the video uh, that's advancing rapidly and the text to speech and being able to turn that into an avatar and, and, mm-hmm. and all of that. Yeah. I mean, if anything, that makes a need for people to interact live even more important because mm-hmm. you have to be able to, you know, to see, touch and feel them, so to speak, um, versus wondering if, if you're talking to a real person at all. I mean, that's kind of a terrifying thought, isn't it? It is, um, but I'll give you a great example real quick. Um, I, I saw this app the other day that is a video app for Zoom, just like this. You see how I'm looking at the camera right now. But what happens is the camera takes my face and they project my same face to you, but my eyes looking at you. But in real time, my eyes is looking down here, looking at a teleprompter. It looks real. It looks so real. I can look like that. I can look like this. Somebody may may, may be coming in, but I'm still talking and looking. It's, it's, it's insane. I've seen it. I saw it. I saw it. It it, Well, it, it, no, it it didn't look real yet. It, you could tell that it will soon time (laughs) very soon. (laughs) Um, but I, but I still think, I think the, the interaction that I think is missing now is really for younger professionals who, um, still have to to have a lot to learn in terms of um, professional development. And it's just hard to replicate when you're virtual. That That's really I get what it. is. There's, there's something mm-hmm. missing from just those little small you know, hallway conversations, overhearing other people, reading their body language. Like I didn't, I wasn't able to do um, in the story I told earlier. And as a career salesperson, I, have realized through over the past week thinking about this, like, man, I, yeah, that's, I'm, I'm just talking, not knowing how it's received um, to, to a group that's dangerous. I mean, yeah. like yeah. that's a bad idea because if you miss a mark and then go away you, and you, and not know it, um, you, know, you could, you could just cause a lot of unnecessary challenges. And I think that's what companies are dealing with right now is just, you know, in examples like that playing out over and over and over and over throughout the day where you know people are you know typing things a lot more than they used to using slack which we've started to do a lot of and there's great benefit to that but you miss you know tone and inflection and depending on if you put a comma in the right place it could be sending the wrong <laughs> message yep. um, an true. unintended message so those those are really those are real issues and i think businesses are now struggling with that where we've gotten to that part of the evolution of working remotely where there's a lot of unsolved challenges that need to be resolved and and there's going to be tools and software and new businesses i think i've already seen some cropping up about how to do that so big big entrepreneurial opportunity there for sure but in the meantime it's a challenge as a, as an employer to decide what's perfect, right? What's yeah. right, what's best. Um, 
I I I harder. think as a as a leader for anybody out there listening, if you're struggling with anything, what Pete and I are talking about today, as far as how to how to fulfill just how to fulfill that 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 human connection when your team is spread out because let me tell you it, it's it's this organization the team is spread out right but we do a really good job at 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 bringing everybody together yes yeah, sometimes we do drop some communication balls here and there like any other organization would but we strive to make it better the best thing the best advice i can give all leaders out there is whatever tools you have make a good honest effort to make sure you're there for your team and you make sure you give them every tools they need and be genuine with them. Be genuine with them. If they're performing, give them praise. If they're not performing, let them know about it. The communication stuff is there. It's just a matter of how, what, how we use the tools that we have right now to communicate with the team. If they see that you're, that you really are looking out for the best interest, doesn't matter how far they are. They're going to be loyal. Ricky, I think that's a perfect way to, um, end it a good deadline if you will back to the right. original phrase <laughs> that's right phrases we're not no horses were harmed today um no <laughs> no um i think let's see wait i think i think you that was that was a you were a straight shooter in that and so <laughs> you, well i'm just waiting for that letter from peter well in there yeah it's <laughs> it's coming yes the four horses that we've beaten all over the country well Thank you for listening um, again this week. I think we may be due for Q&A later this yes, week on our yes, next uh, our next podcast. But as always, please reach out. We'd love to hear from you. Hire Calling, H-I-R-E-C-A-L-L-I-N-G at fourcornerresources.com. We love um, taking any questions for our next Q&A. So please reach out and review and rate us. And, um, and thank you for listening. Ricky, anything else? No, thank you very much. Have a good one. I got a tamale waiting for me. If you get a Trader Joe's nearby, get the tamales. They're good. All right. Fair enough. Goodbye for now. Goodbye.